glad to have a chief here, and I, and I hope that some of our office like that, we get a chance for people to greet them. We get people to come here like a chief position. I hope that we can um, have an opportunity to do something with a community to come to see you. They need to know the chief that day. And we can work on trying to maybe do something like that. I think that's my job. Well, he's a pretty good PR man himself. <laughs> All right, Main Street Foundation and Main Street Foundation. Yeah, Main Street Foundation. Yeah, Main Street
a uh, vote of the council uh, to permit that. So uh, if you uh, uh, want to permit Mrs. Richardson to vote tonight, uh, please, uh, one of you make a motion and, and have a second and then uh, uh, call for approval of that vote. Is this just a blanket opinion or just for this one meeting? It, it is a, it's up to you, but typically you have to at least determine at each meeting that it was a reasonable call. Just because you go on vacation typically hasn't been an issue. It, it's one of your physical ability to be here, not inconvenient. I offer a motion that we allow Mrs. Richardson, Councilman Richardson, to participate in the voting of this council meeting due to the fact that she's in rehab at this time. Second. Second. Uh, I'll call that. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Glass? No. Mr. Cameron? No. Ms. Richardson? You cannot vote. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Wanda? Yes. And Mr. Moultrie? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, uh, now, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, could we uh, uh, go back and reconsider that motion that was adopted right ahead of my comments? Uh, so that uh, Mrs. Richardson may cast a vote on that item. Yes, okay. your Main Street. Uh, okay. I can just call for the vote again, right? Yep. Well, Thank I'm going to ask for the motion. I've got to ask for the motion. Well, actually, it passed. It passed. It's without. If, without you would, if you would just show her and not voting on that. Okay. On everything we discussed. So I don't need that. No, um, that's, that's fine. But just show her and not voting on that. Um, consent? We did amend the agenda to add the minutes from the last meeting to the consent agenda. Yes. Yes. Mr. Cameron? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Mr. Moultrie? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> on the point of the uh, minutes, I can understand if, if you guys have made the correction yet since photos aren't actually on the, your website. You have my father's name in the minutes versus myself. I and apologize. you guys are voting on it without correcting that. Mm -hmm. So are we paying attention to the minutes or are we just voting? What? Everybody know my father. That's sitting up at that table. Mm -hmm. I don't need to see uh, yeah. uh, I can instruct the uh, city clerk to make that notation on yeah. that set of minutes. Did you see me afterwards because of this stuff? You want to make that correction? Okay, but my point is I see you approve something that's not correct. Copy the minutes that I have does not have your name here on the Okay. Yeah. It's purely a minute. Yeah. It's, uh, it's purely a ministerial matter, and a, a privilege error like that can be uh, corrected. If it is there, we will amend the official minutes of the meeting. That's true. Okay, um, we have one person. That's Terry Stark. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Terry Starks. I'm the pastor of Power Ministry Church of God in Christ. And today I want to stand to announce that we will be hosting a um, day of prayer here at City Hall on March the third on the March the twenty-first at six thirty. And we know that there's a lot that's going on within our community, a lot that's going on within the world. We see what's happening in Ukraine. And it is a time that we as a community should pour together for a time of prayer. 
So my call today is for everyone in the community, pastors, uh, city council, if you all will come, I'm asking that you all will come and join us on that day uh, for a day of prayer. I have some flyers and say the date if, if I can. So today I stand to uh, announce the day of prayer and um, that we will be here and like I said, we're calling everyone from everywhere, uh, no matter the color, background, we'll just, there's a time for prayer and uh, we need to unite in prayer. I believe that what's going on within this world, even within our community, uh, that God can respond and answers to no matter what's going on. I serve a God that's bigger than any problem in this situation. And I stand on the scripture that if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray and seek his face, then we will hear from heaven and God will hear the king. So, so today I'm asking that uh, city council, if y'all join with us uh, on this day, um, March, on March 21st at 6.30 uh, for a day of prayer here in the community. And that's all I have for today. Thank you. Yes. And I'll Thank you. Just on the city Facebook webpage, but we'll, you know, put it out again and refresh it. Remind everybody we have flyers too. All right. Mark. Do I just move on? Yeah. Come back. Okay. All right. General business. Uh, there are no public hearings tonight. Yeah. Uh, general business. We have several items. Uh, the first one is a uh, city council approval to accept the DEO match agreement. Remember back we applied for and got a grant to purchase the generators for the sewer plant public works department our water system and as well as a number of lift stations um there's a grant you know takes takes time but here uh we were approved for it and we actually got the contract and it covered 75 percent of the cost which is seven hundred forty five thousand six hundred eighty nine dollars we applied for a waiver with the governor's office for the other 25 percent because it was a quarter of a million dollars and we were approved for that waiver. This is the agreement uh, for that. So hopefully, uh, if you approve this match agreement, we'll have approximately a million dollars to accomplish those generators and uh, backup systems for the lift station. This particular one is for the match. It's two hundred twenty-five thousand four hundred fifty-five dollars and fifty cents. Be glad to answer any questions. So in essence, that's not going to cost the city anything because mm -hmm. they waived the match. Correct. All of this will be done through grant funding. Right. About a million dollars left. So I need to make a motion. Okay. And then I ask the question. I make a motion to approve the match agreement. Second. 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 Uh, yes, ma'am. The second item under general business tonight 
Uh, Seats Council approval to accept the GEO hometown revitalization agreement. Again, this is one we've been working on for some time now, probably a year and a half. Um, approximately 2.1 million, it's $2,069,030. Uh, it's commonly referred to as the hometown revitalization. It's the one that uh, the discussion, uh, there were some planning workshops way back under a planning grant, but uh, most of the discussion here on the street is talking about the sidewalks, the lighting, uh, uh, the, uh, the building that we were able to get from the county will be demolished. Um, this is the grant we've been waiting on, though. I, I, people are wondering why we hadn't already done it, so we could use these funds to build that pocket park. But that's included in it. There's some alleyway work, a number of amenities of, uh, at the existing Heritage Park, and whatever we can get out of these dollars. I will tell you, I had a meeting just last week, uh, DOT, of course, that's their roadway there, and uh, the resurfacing, the striving, because we intend to bring the sidewalks out five feet on each side. And so we've made a request to the uh, Metropolitan Planning Agency, it has to coordinate transportation projects with them, and uh, they've been very good, and uh, a meeting was set up with some high-level people to coordinate this project at the same time. Because, you know, this thing's going to be tore up when the sidewalk's coming out so they could resurface, mill and resurface the road and do all the new striping they would pay for. It. And in the meeting the other day, which we had in the room, they, they would also be responsible if we go that route for the engineering cost. They would include the sidewalks and lighting in their one bid. The state would actually bid it out. So we would be invoiced for our part of it. Um, I like the concept. I think it's a savings overall. It saves uh, saves whatever we would spend, probably forty thousand. So I know you don't want to do that. But for, you know, the engineering fees will be absorbed by DOT, so it gives us a few more dollars for the things we want to do. And uh, what you will see next, if we go that route, we need to approve this to move forward. This is our agreement for the money, the two point one million. So we need to do that in mind. I just want you to know the things that are going on there that may or may not happen. What was mentioned in that meeting, and do there are engineers were there, so they're fully aware of it. But the next thing would be a resolution saying that you want to do that. So you'll have another opportunity once we firm things up. We, the council would have to adopt the resolution that they're interested in working with DOT that way. So I just wanted to mention that. Again, this one is just to formalize the grant. And if you look on page one there, those are the items that we submitted. Um, Hopefully we could do each one of them. You know, you don't know until you do the bid how far the money will go, but uh, the green alleys and the, the uh, sidewalk patterns, the lighting, all the streetscape enhancements and, and get rid of that building to make a nice little pocket park there. So uh, we want to try to get rid of the overhead wires. A lot of that we can do ourselves and uh, get, the, get the wiring underground and just dress up uh, this part of town, make it uh, more just to businesses bringing their money to our city. Yeah. Talk about this. Uh, I know since we vote on it, I know probably a lot of people don't really know what's going on, but if we vote on it, we will come back and talk about it once we do it. But we did have meetings on it. We had meetings on it. Uh, just to kind of, before we get into it and y'all get a chance to come back, if we kind of think about what the real deal about floor space uh, the way they got their sidewalks out when you come close to the stadium. Gaines, is that Gaines, Gaines property? Gaines so you think about the Gaines street. When we were doing, when we were having that view, it was kind of set up like that. Well, I don't remember what was the breakdown time of that. I mean, what's the beginning to end? Are you talking a month, two months? Oh, no, no. We go, if they approve this or not, then we go into engineering where there are engineers do it or we do this agreement with DOT. Now the engineers will have to design the documents, what we're going to bid out. So there's going to have to be a bid done for the amount of money. But I mean, as far as the construction downtown, because it's going to take oh, that will be, yes, yes, there will be plenty of, of meeting time for it cause, because it does affect the businesses. You know, nobody's just going to go tear up concrete. There'll be plenty meeting in this room with everybody. There's still time because it'll take a while to design it. Then it's got to be bid. It's not nobody's going to be surprised on it. There'll be plenty of time for uh, input. Tonight is just to approve the contract with the state of Florida for the money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
No, so I think from the meetings we've had and from a uh, uh, construction background standpoint, I think the sidewalks and the lighting would kind of be the first because mm -hmm. it's going to tear up the most. So then you work your way. That, so those are things you can do easier. Right? Well, the, the big one's going to be tearing that concrete up. I think you kind of have to do that. I will make the motion that we are city council city chair please to approve and and accept the DBO hometown revitalization agreement. Second. Okay. Discussion. Okay. Okay. Anybody on this side? Anybody on this side? Come on up. Uh, just a question. At, at what point will we get opportunity to see? Uh, a, a geographical map or drawing of what the projected you know, uh, master plan or whatever it is. Yeah. May I? Yeah. Okay, well, like you were pointing that way, if you remember that, this was the first kind of conceptual, those amenities from all those meetings when we had the federal right. planning people in here, that's the conceptual. What you're, I think, what you're talking about is like when you get into design and right. figuring out what the brick pavers look like or the mm -hmm. type of lamps, I think that kind of detail. Well, no, I just, I, I was a little, little confused about, about the sidewalk coming out five feet or whatever. I might have been misleading or whatever, but you know, I just couldn't conceptually get that in my head. Yeah, and the thought was that uh, you would have the businesses would have you know, the sidewalks are kind of near here, mm -hmm. but you'd have more tables, chairs for the uh, to support businesses, whether they were selling food or, or flowers or mm -hmm. jewelry, or to give them more outside area. Was what I got out of the plan mm -hmm. without affecting the parking. Oh, it's going to the parking. Now, the parking, I think we're going to be okay. So, get rid of that middle turn lane. Yeah. We're going to slow this traffic down. Uh, Hopefully, we're not going to the discussion on that. You know. Yeah, when you get into the engineering part, you know, that's where the, the road is laid when they, when they draw it. Thank you. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. Now I remember that. No, we're not. Our priority is not losing any parking in downtown Chattahoochee. Right. 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 Any more comments on the floor? All right. How far, buddy? Mr. Price? Yes. Mr. Kimberly? Ms. Richardson? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. And Mr. Malkin? Yes. Item 2C um, is another grant that staff is asking the council to approve this particular one. Uh, the grant agreement with the State Division of Historical Resources. Again, it's normally applied for some time back. It take a while. I don't know if you remember, but it involved the uh, stabilization of the Indian Mounds 1 and 2 down at River Landing Park. Uh, is how we were able to get into this cycle. Um, and I want to give a shout out to Dale Cox because he's so knowledgeable about the Indian now. My particular interest is the boardwalk, which is included in the grant. The big one that was, we got estimated, you know, $40,000 is included in this grant. So it will uh, fix the boardwalk and stabilize mound one and two. It's, it's a $158,000 grant um, that staff is asking you if you so choose to approve this tonight so we can proceed. That's the one we had that meeting on down there. I need a motion. I offer a motion. Uh, yeah. Second. 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 Any discussion on this side? I just like to tell me how 521 more day. I just like to uh, speak to something that Robert just mentioned, and that's recognizing Dale Cox. I would like to see this council, this city, give that man some recognition for the multi-millions of dollars that he has had awarded that he's directly responsible for. Writing the grant, getting the grant, pushing the grant. We we need to recognize that, I think. And I was in that meeting, was two weeks ago now? Something like that. And uh, those archeologists and geologists had no clue until Dale filled them in. And they pretty much agreed with everything that he said. <laughs> and uh, I mean, he's very knowledgeable. And, you know, I would like y'all to consider having Dale come over and recognize him in some way and uh, get it out there in the media somehow. Uh, just ask y'all to consider it. items 
off of the whole checklist of our submission, one was they wanted uh, the city to adopt a relocation policy. It doesn't really apply to this particular project because there's no one living in their housing offices in there at this time, but it's a requirement for the federal funding that we want the city to have that. So we immediately prepared one and it's before you tonight. Um, if you want to mention there is a typo under the analysis on the agenda item itself. Um, that's because it was used for the template from the uh, generator, and so you might call that in the second third sentence. But anyway, this um, this is just approval of a policy. If if in the future we get another federally federally funded project, uh, I guess like an apartment complex or an office building that people were there, uh, that the city has a means for the relocation during construction, it will be required for us to do that right now. Do I need a motion? Or do y'all have any questions? I don't think I just I'm glad that we uh, seem to be on the right track with that. That's a very important uh, project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, Ms. Richardson? Ms. Richardson, did you have comments? Ms. Richardson? Yes, Ms. Rhonda. Did you have comment on your last? Yes, I said we need a motion before we discuss. Okay. Yeah. I will offer that the city adopt the anti displacement and relocation policy. Follow the guidelines of the federally funded CDBG and allow the mayor to sign the document. That's me. Second. Anybody on this side of the room? Anybody on this side of the room? All right, call for a vote. Ms. Clark? Yes. Mr. Cameron? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Richardson? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Mr. Malkin. Yes. Okay. All right. The, the next two items are ordinances, and I will defer to the city attorney. I'll read the, the first ordinance by title. Ordinance number 567 by title is an ordinance to the city of Chattahoochee, Florida, expanding the hours for sale of alcohol beverages for restaurants on premises, providing for authority, providing for conflict and, uh, conflict and severability, and providing for an effective date. The ordinance is before you for consideration on first reading. I got a question. The way I'm reading this is, we're bringing it back again. Um, this is saying that they could sell alcohol seven days a week from 2 a.m. From They couldn't sell any day of the week between 2 a.m. and 7 a.m. But then they could sell seven days a week starting at 7 a.m. Am I correct? Okay. okay. I want to make sure that was what I was reading. Yeah. Y'all got a motion? I thought it had been signed soon, so I found out we'd come back for a week to vote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think on that, when you see what the, what the alcohol says, but when you're talking about the time, it, this is just to get it on the agenda, and we have a discretion on the time. If I'm not my career coming back this far. Right. So it's just to get it on the get it on the for the public to talk about. And then you have a discretion on the time. Well but on the second reading it'll be still seven AM every day, seven days a week. You you have a discretion on the time, right? Mr. Lawrence? There uh, for him uh if there is no sponsor for this ordinance 
then it dies for lack of emotion. So if, if there's not at least one of you who uh, is the driving force behind this ordinance, uh, then the ordinance process doesn't proceed. Mr. Miller, if you want to. Sorry, um, I, did, I couldn't hear very well, but I would like to make a motion for ordinance number 567, first read. Second. Second. Put it on the agenda. For next meeting. No, it will be for action tonight on first reading. No, sir. So, Ms. Moultrie has indicated his support for the ordinance by making a second to the motion. And let me make sure this is the times, right? So since I, I think we're thinking we can change the times, this is the ordinance, right? This is the ordinance, and then right. there's a motion. There's no so secret changes here. Wait a minute, this is the ordinance. It, you know, he, he has indicated that he supports the motion, mm -hmm. that he has support the adoption of this ordinance. Uh, you may then ask for public comment, which they're entitled to, even though we are going to have a public hearing uh, in two weeks. Uh, if you have then a motion to amend this motion, this ordinance, then that would have standing. So you stand for the time. Okay. If the time is changed to 12 or something like that, can you amend it tonight or do it? Can it be amended in the next meeting? Yes, you, you will have the opportunity to amend tonight. Tonight, okay. All right. And that's after the first vote. Uh, can you do it within this vote? Yes. Do it within this vote. Okay. Um, what I'm asking, we got a time of 7 o'clock in here, all right? Can it be amended to 12? Yes. Within this vote? Uh, do we have to get this vote done first before we do it? No. Uh, that would be a subsidiary vote to the principal motion. Okay. And you would make that motion uh, after this vote. Okay. No, not after the vote, before the vote. But I can do that if Ms. Richardson already did uh, the. Yes, you may. I may. Okay. You, you would now have standing to make a motion to amend yeah. okay. this motion. But I'll make the motion to amend it from 7 a.m. to 12. You don't have to have that in writing, Steve. You, you, you haven't formulated that in writing. No, uh, okay. Thank you. 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 Do Mary Richard realize that it can be amended to 12 o'clock? Not yet. Okay. Oh, not yet. Okay. You don't happen to have the one we had before us last meeting, do you? One. Could you retrieve that for us from your office? I can. Huh? I, I can. Could you do that, please? Um, yeah. that will, uh, there, there was a motion on this subject at the last meeting, but or was it wasn't it the last very last meeting we had? Yes. And that motion failed. Is it attached to your minutes? Yes, sir. All right, that's good. Fine. And we we'll, we'll review the yeah. Yeah. I guess we want to see them. They'd be on the public hearing. They aren't attached to my set of minutes. Is it not behind 9A? All right, just a second. 6A, I'm sorry. 
No, I didn't. This is the last page of the one. It's easy to see this. Make sure I'm not. Yeah, no, that's this one. I apologize, I didn't foresee the possibility of an amendment to the draft. Yeah. Uh, this is all the last
following language, and on Sunday between the hours of 2 a.m. and 12 noon p.m. So that addresses Mr. Smoker's intention to uh, uh, to permit uh, sales beginning at noon on Sunday. So I have this master copy marked, and I will initial it and identify it as the master copy for this amendment. And date of today's day. All right, thank you. Okay, so we have a motion, we have a second. Now I'm looking for the second one. This is on the motion to amend. On the motion to amend it to 12 a.m. on 12 p.m. on Sunday. Okay. Anybody on this side? Anybody on this side? Okay. Yes. Come up. Yes, please. Thank you. Yeah, Ronnie. Is that one? Five, six, one in the garage. This is the first reading. Mm -hmm. you, you guys, uh, there's no voting tonight. All they can make is to, to move forward, right? Mm -hmm. But my thing is, why are we wasting time with this? It started just two months ago. Why, why is it such an important issue? What's the significance of it? I don't understand. We did the right thing last month, and it didn't pass. Now we want to open it back up. What's the significance of starting to sell alcohol at 12 o'clock on a Sunday when for the last, I don't know how many decades, well, I take it back, the last establishment, they asked to start selling alcohol at 6 p.m. So what's so important about changing to 12 o'clock? Okay? We got a whole bunch of you're gonna, Ricardo. Okay, you're gonna pass it tonight, and we're having a discussion before you vote. I know you're gonna pass it. Okay, I already know, cause you're programmed to. That's why you open it back up. But yes, ma'am. Thank you. 
Which is the right thing to do? We voted no. But I don't understand why it came back open again when the right thing to do was to vote it, uh, not have it serious. The thing, I'm going to say this, right here, down on the you know, The last meeting, I said I was going to get out and see what you did. Yeah, I said that to me before that. It was being written to you. I'm just saying. I'm just trying to direct you. What you said that was me before last. What I'm saying, are you going to let me see? Yes, sir, go ahead. Right. All right. So, I'm thinking this is the reason why. I said the last me. I tried to take it. Got out and spoke to you. You even spoke with uh, WB, both brothers. Spoke with a lot of people. This is, this puts it back on you. Now, looking at Looking at restaurants like Red Lobster and different places like that, you have it not like people all over the place. You just going up there to one that one to drink wine or something at 12 o'clock, they think. It's just like any other restaurant. It's not something that we are here, uh, want people out here to get big people that coming out of church. You got people that in the church there that mm -hmm. drink wine. Now, Restaurant. I haven't seen one of the restaurants, and, and and this is one of the things that I was fighting. One of the things that I spoke to some of the restaurants. If you have somebody in there that's unable to drive or something like that or having a problem, it's the job of the restaurant to try to make sure that we don't have those issues. Ain't no different from anybody else that's been going to the convenience store or something like that to get a something done. You know. I don't, I'm not going to be up here drinking, but I feel that as my job here is to try with the businesses to give them the opportunity at 12. I'm now, I push back at 7, 12, I see that the one that's going to drink wine or something with the meal, that's what they do. Okay? I'm not advocating for nobody to get up there and get drunk and run around and do different things, but you can't even stop there at a convenience store. Trying to give them the same opportunity that Red Lobster or anybody else has. That's all I'm trying to do. I ain't got nothing against no church person or Christian. I'm trying to do one my best. You're working for us. <laughs> I got one question for you, Mr. Moses, if you don't mind. Last meeting, did you vote no? I said I was going to vote no if it wasn't tabled. <laughs> okay. We tabled it. No, we didn't say no. I said I would vote no if they didn't say no. I didn't get a chance to get out and speak with people like I needed to. For one, not to talk about what's going on with you with my family, but I got stuff going on with my family. I didn't get a chance to get out there and talk to people. This time I did. Matter of fact, I got a chance. It might not been long, but I kind of already know how you felt. I was going to do it just a minute soon when I got done and said, hey, this, I'm going to try to get this to come back. <coughs> no, we are not. How do you feel about it? Okay. There's no change. I still think mm -hmm. when you guys voted last time, squashed it. That was the right thing to do. That was the moral thing to do. That was the thing to do for the city. That a lot of people have been here all the day of their lives. Now we got one set of individuals coming here trying to change the whole makeup of Chattahoochee. Okay? Um, I, I just I, I feel that you all do the right thing to get back up here for the session. I know this may seem out of place for me to say this, but I don't think that selling alcohol in a restaurant at twelve. I'm going to make it start at 7, because I don't think too many people are going to be running to the restaurants at 7 o'clock in the morning anyway. But 12 o'clock is going to destroy the moral fabric of Chattahoochee. I just don't think so. So for you all to say 12 o'clock is those Christian people that come in from church, don't want to go to those restaurants, they don't go. Buy the tab has to buy the ticket to a place that don't sell that house. But like you said, Longhorn, Applebee's, and all Outback, and all these other places, they have their little sections, and the people, the families are eating their dinner. 
and the other people mind their business. Just give people a chance to enjoy it. That's all I'm saying. I wanted to speak on uh, Mr. McMillan's comment about more. You, this council, cannot dictate more to anybody. Define more. Define Christianity. Define a Christian. You might be a Christian or a moral person in your mind, but are you and everybody else? And there's nothing immoral about selling liquor, wine, wine beer, whatever, at 12 o'clock. There's nothing immoral about that because that person has the choice to either drink it or not drink it. To either eat in that establishment or not eat in that establishment. A politician should not get involved and more. Because most of them, and I'm not playing this part, but, but, but look what we've got running this country. Careful. <laughs> yeah. Careful now. <laughs> but and, and their morality, you know. So I think this council is very wise to bring this back up. I asked this council at the last meeting to bring it back up, and Chris tried to get it tabled and bring it back. So thank you for doing what you said you were going to do. Chris, I am. I want to talk to my constituents. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to say what my constituents told me. And both of you kept your word, I believe. I talked to a lot of people old people, white people, black people, Hispanic people. Walk around town, drove around town, and asked. And I'm going to say 99.8% of them said, I don't care. If I want to drink, I'm going to drink. If I don't want to drink, I'm not going to drink. Okay, so thank you. I, I just have one question I want to say. <clears throat> One zero zero two Northern Avenue, Chattanooga, Florida. Florida. I'll be able to talk. I'm taking call. I've been a business owner here in Chattanooga for 26 years, and I can remember coming to this council for a lot of things over the years. Most of them good, very few bad, but the majority of them good. And it's always been my thought that we've always had a council that wanted to see business grow and change that i i can't ever remember having a council person that i could even if i had differences with them to say that they didn't feel or i didn't feel like they were really trying to do what they should do to help chattahoochee grow with keeping that in mind i personally don't believe the city of chattahoochee should be involved in anything to do with alcohol I don't think you should make the decisions of it just for one reason or another. That that's just always been my opinion because you're speaking for too many people and there's too many opinions. But with that being said, I've sat in this audience many times and I've watched as you've agreed time after time, month after month, to let organizations and entities sell beer right in the middle of our town, right by our police station in the midst of three churches, three churches, okay? And all of them within less than 500 feet of where the actual beer sales were being done. And these entities actually promote children to come to them. So how can you tell a grown adult, we can't do this for you as a business owner who's licensed to do it, 
And God knows I pay every license there is. I got some I probably don't even need. But if you're a business owner and you come to Chattahoochee with the intent of doing something, and I'm, I'm not really a drinker. I'll be honest with you. I, you know, I, I might have a drink, but I wouldn't know anything about getting up at 7 o'clock in the morning and having anything to drink because that, that's just not me. But if you're going to do it one way, you need to do it for all. And if you've got a business owner who's willing to do it and, and they don't do what they're supposed to, then come back and say, hey, that's what you got this man right here for and this man right here for. They know how to stop it. He, he definitely knows how to stop it. I guarantee you he can stop it. So, and, and he can make suggestions to you as to stop it if things are bad. Just just give the business owner the opportunity. It's hard in Chattahoochee to make a living. Mm -hmm. Just so y'all know, it, it's hard. When I asked the questions about what was going to happen with the downtown tearing up, people don't realize if you're not a business owner, when you tear up a town to put in a street and you lose that one day or that four days, or somebody comes in on the trailer and sells a barbecue plate for a day, sometimes that one day is what pays your utility bill for that month. And, and, and that's just realistic. I thank God every day and the people of Chattahoochee for supporting my business, what, August 26 years. 26 years. And it's tough, people. It's tough. Allow the business owner to do what, what she needs to do. Okay? Comments from the crowd. The audience. The audience. I was correct. Excuse me, correct. Put out for the record. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I had suggested adding some language. I went back and saw that the scheme of the draft of the ordinance, as it was presented to you. Uh, oh, that uh, does make the same application of the hours of 2 a.m. to 7 a.m. each day and uh, and doesn't separate out, that, separate out that language for Sundays anymore. So disregard what I said before and uh, and in, instead uh, I'd ask that you renew, renew the motion uh, to a To amend to change the hours from 2 a.m. to 7 a.m. seven days a week. <coughs> and that's, uh, as I was looking at correctly, so Ms. Mosley has made that motion. So if you'd ask for a second. Thank you. 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 So what I had written up, um, can I have a clean one of these, please? A clean copy of that sign? Does the document have to be written tonight, or do they just make the motion to change it? No, we'll, we'll get it right, but I, this, I just don't think this is what I... As it was presented tonight, sir? I, I don't think this is the draft I got when I got the other draft in here. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm thinking this draft here is not the one we worked out. Yes, sir. It's the only one that I've had. Um, that I emailed on. Oh, okay. But I, I, I understand. Uh, because our principal was going to be to open it up on Sunday, just like every other day. Yes, sir. That was okay, can I have a clean one, please? Yeah. Well, this is not a clean copy. Huh? But I made my clerk notes on this one. Uh, does someone have a... Uh, Robert, do you have a... Do you have your... Yeah, I, I can spot it one. Okay, well, here. Does one of you all carry your... Uh, Yes, sir, Mr. Sanders. I just got a quick observation. Okay. Quick. 
Todd was telling Quinn Quinn that they were short. And, and this is mainly from a step up rather than for the council. You know, I, I sat in your position for like 20 years to be in Parliament procedure and lost rule of law. If a motion is on the table, on the floor, we voted on it. And someone make an amended motion. This must made an amended motion. Then the individual should know what included in that amended motion should come directly from the one that made the amended motion. And the motion should clearly state what this amended motion is. The hour of time and everything. And the attorney or your recorder recorded what he requested and you vote on it. <coughs> Can't draft a motion. The motion has to be indicated and basically verbally drafted by Mr. Moses. So Mr. Moses should clearly state what his motion is, what are the hours, what are the times, and then record it, and then you vote on it. And that's just that simple. And that's all to come by. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, right. Amended motion for the process. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go back and ask you again to make that consistent with the motion to amend with adding uh, the language and on Sunday between the hours of 2 a.m. and 12 p.m., which would be the closed period. The closed period. That's the closed period. Okay. So, Mr. Uh, closed period now is in between. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Madam Mayor Pro Tem, we have another one tonight, uh, ordinance number 568, dealing with the district uh, issue again, and I will defer to the attorney. Uh, before I read this, I, I had to make two uh, uh, trivia corrections. In the title on page, on the front page, on the, on the title in the fourth line, the present distance approved as of now is how much? 300 this year. It's 300 now, okay. That's what was proved last night. Oh, last yeah. night. 500. We've got 500 showing up here one time. Yeah, that was before that. Um, and so there's a, a trivia correction to be made if, if you would do this on your master over here. Uh, Look at section two. Yeah, correction. The third line? Yes. That should have been a 300 and not, okay. and not a 200, so if you can black out that 500 and write in three. Okay. And the clerk has marked uh, a uh, master copy uh, of that uh, document and write it for you. So now, um, I'll read by title, ordinance number 568 which is an ordinance of the city of Chattahoochee, Florida, reducing the distance between businesses selling alcohol and churches from 300 feet to 200 feet, providing for, sever uh, providing for authority, providing for conflict and severability, and providing for an effective date. And that ordinance is before you for consideration on first reading. Any motion? Motion. I make a motion that we accept ordinance number 568. Second. Anybody on this side? Oh, you go ahead. All right. Uh, a lot of people may not know all the zone commercial areas in Chattahoochee. One of the zone commercial areas in Chattahoochee, we, we're talking about trying to be south side built. Then down on the south side building, they build a convenience store called Dixie Grocery years back. Dixie Grocery closed. Therefore, it's no longer grandfathered in to, say, uh, to have a convenience store. It will stop it from being as a sale alcohol. That church that crossed on the street from, and most people know that church, uh, used to be this rain store. <coughs> that convenience store and that church has been there for years, never been a problem. There's no, I don't see any other area in Chattahoochee where we would have a problem with that type of business. Technically, if you say, okay, I know uh, somebody mentioned Mr. Stark Church, you got the dollar through there. That's already selling alcohol. If this church had already been there, the dollar store wouldn't have been there to go there anyway. 200 feet is a good little way, but it stopped. 300 feet stopped Dixie Grocery Store from being able to open up again. And you got somebody down there working hard trying to put a convenience store back down on Lincoln Drive. So you won't stop in the community. You don't want to try to stop people from being able to do stuff in the community. That store, I have never known for that store to affect that church. Never known for that. We're talking about doing a south side building down there. We're talking about trying to revitalize Lincoln Drive. That's a step I think in the right direction. Am I going down there about this? Probably not. But if that people are distracted, they're not just going in there to buy beer, they're going in there to buy soda, or whatever. But I think you should be able to give the young man an opportunity to have a business there with a convenience store. Is that the Yes, 
Mm -hmm. How do you say all the cops that this story leaves and call it out? You have lots of right away in Chattanooga. Never built, I mean, it's all over the city, more than I've ever seen. Uh, uh, we had a request from Miss Mary Ann Barber, right behind her house. She, she wanted to know if she could possibly get that 60 foot behind her house. Um, it was laid out as a street, way back when, it was never built. I told her I would, uh, I would propose it to the city if the council was interested in giving away property. I think, mm -hmm. um, I know in the past deals I've had with this, there was some requirement, but it seemed like there was something if it was adjoining, they had some flexibility. But, you know, it had to be kind of competitively with the county to dispose of property. We had to do it into a realtor or auction or something competitively. But um, I'll leave that to the church. You may not be interested in getting rid of any of your land in Chattahoochee. Mm -hmm. and, but if you are, then I'll have to find out about the, the process. I can, I can let the be there. Uh, but I can give you some comment about that. Uh, if you have unused right of way that you don't in the future project you will uh, improve as, and use as right of way, then, uh, then it may be vacated. And then there are uh, rules that apply as to who the beneficiary of that is. And on the typical street, if the property owners uh, across the street on each side and the vacation results in the, the operational law affects it, the middle line of that right of way will be their new boundary. Now, uh, law and, and standards of practice encourage you to abandon property that you will not use that is dedicated right away. You cannot just sell it. Uh, the, the remedy of removing it is to vacate it, and that returns it to the tax rate. And so that's the governmental cost <coughs> uh, to support uh, a vacation. But I want to get a feel for the council if you're even interested uh, before we work out the details. And I told her I would meet you in two years, see if we can get to that point. You really have, uh, you may have a lot more, you know, if you start there. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. I mean, how are we going to justify giving one somebody one thing and then another person says, I, I can think the main street right there is going to come up immediately. Mm -hmm. Well, your standard's going to be whether or not, uh, first of all, you, you, you would look to your future land use map mm -hmm. and see how you've addressed it there. You look to your future plans to see if you have plans in place or you, you need to establish plans to improve it. But that's a, a beginning point for you. Uh, I think, and I know somebody, I'm coming to spoke with somebody in another situation, similar to that. And I was planning on coming to see you, so I think you need to be very careful. Let me look into it more then, because you know, I think I got what I need. And the last thing, um, and I bet Pam is still here. Um, was her? Jean McDaniel. Y'all know her. Um, but she is proposed a joint um, project. Good name. She, I guess she's a member. Or y'all work together. She's a member of that. But she's proposed doing some artwork, mural type work in the city. And, um, we bring this to you tonight because I talked with him about it and it's close to City Hall here on the wood fence there at Clay's place. Mm -hmm. But in her coming out here looking at it and preparing everything, there's that metal shed that the city owns right behind City Hall. You know, so I can see an artist now looking at that side, you know, like the lady there, right there. But so they were asking uh, what the possibility was. I said it's a good possibility. Uh, show us what you got. And, uh, Pam was kind enough to bring some concepts, I guess. It's pretty well decided on these, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but it's basically hummingbirds and flowers, uh, butterflies. Um, and it's going to be on a private fence anyway, but would the, would the council allow uh, the manager to, to work with them on painting the one side of that building where we store the stage and stuff? Sure. Some artwork? 
I don't think it requires a boat or anything. Um, so, so under the charter, the facilities and all, the city manager can can pay and make things. But you know, I wouldn't do that with something like this. I want the council to make sure that y'all are good and that anything has to be murals and paintings and things like that, especially city property. Okay. 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 I have no problem with it. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you all. That's all I have. Now, Mayor Pro Tem. I don't have any other slides. Councilor O'Toole. I would like to apologize to Mr. McMillan and I also apologize to Mr. Howell. Your names were not listed on the street web monitor. They were but they are as they're listed again and re read them once more, it does say that that your name was called
a book of what she did. A signature? Yes, the whole shit. And from the storm after, you know, when the storm came to got blew off and turned went off in the woods so she told her by Mr. Leon. You know, oh, okay. Um uh, again I'm, I'm glad that uh we recognized the chief tonight. I do hope that we still get a chance to do a meet and greet that's, that's, that's important, I think. Uh, there's so much, so many good things that have happened over the years. Uh, and I don't even, you know, when you talk about first African-American chief, you think about three women on the board at the same time. I'm not even sure if that's going to be But there's, we got great diversity here in the And it's not always perfect. I think many times sitting on the board when I look out in the audience, people that I know, it's always, I always want to try to do the best I can. Because I know I got to face people out here. I got to face people like Miss Hodge out there. I got to face Miss Mike Watts, people that I know. So I try to do the best I can. And my first, no. I'm not fooling her. I'm not by my own self. I went through a lot when I got up here. Long, when I first got here, I used to talk about that sign all the time. Got criticized for it. I was on the south side building gun for so many years. I saw them being about 18 years. And if I wasn't here, I never stopped them in the south side building. I always talk about south side. Because I want the whole city to go. It's hard to talk about alcohol, wondering about how people don't think. Yeah, because I got to look at people that I know in the face. They're not an easy job. Many times God said, just let it go. But I love this thing, so that's why I continue to say it. I don't like to disappoint people that I know. But I also know if I took on this job, I got to do the best I can and not just think about everything that I want. I look at really start things that you have done up there in Flint Garden, giving kids bicycles. And I remember. When he was doing that, I said, one of the kids didn't get picked, he made sure that they got him. He ain't even from this town. But he wouldn't be the same. We're doing a good job. Is it perfect? No. A lot of people don't even come to the meeting. You go to some of these city council meetings, you don't even know how to have nobody else. We might have sometimes the same amount of people that tell us. And it's good that people are concerned. Shout out to the elementary school. Let us continue to, they're doing a good job of that. Mm -hmm. We gained in number seven. And I remember it was a time when they were talking about shutting us down because we were losing all them numbers. Every time I go up there to the school, and I know they probably don't want to be talking about it, but Miss Thomas and Miss Mike White, always somewhere in the middle, up there dealing with the people. We appreciate y'all for what you're doing. That school is very important. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Simmons is not on the board anymore, the school board, but he thought, like, I don't know what to try to get that all stopped out there tonight. You were talking, they were still on the board. <laughs> That's important to this town. And one thing, it's so easy to call me because you just agree with me. It's so easy to call me. I ain't gonna say that I'm gonna agree with everything that you you say, but I'm gonna listen. And it ain't hard to get me from up there. If you get enough people in my community to come tell me to get off this board, I'll leave. It ain't hard to do that. But I ain't afraid of losing those people. Now, would I fight tooth the hell if I have run? Yes. But I ain't afraid of losing those people. We got a great community. And I love these meetings now, because we can be up to five minutes, we're gone. That was over. <laughs> if you need me, just call me. Like I say, I'm not hard to talk to. Not hard at all. And I hope that we continue to keep working together. We try to move this city forward. We're doing a good job. And it ain't just the city council. Is people in the community trying to help push this city. 
and we got the support of business. I've been telling uh, Stacy that I was going to be up there to show a business game. Medicine. Let's support the business. So she is a she is a lot. Let's see this. Help me say it. I'm about Clark to just say it. She's a bomb DD. So <laughs> let's try to support our business. Let's try to help help push them up, encourage them. Because if we don't do that, we're going to lose them. Then that's when your time starts going down. So let's support each other. Just agree. You can get on me all day. But let's also continue to pray for each other and, and stick in there with each other, not, not be upset with each other. For no <laughs> Ann Williams, I mean Ann Richardson. Yes, I would like to apologize to the chief for not recognizing him at our last meeting. It just totally blew by me that this was um, February, it was our first meeting in February. So chief, I do apologize, but I did make sure that we did recognize you because we wanted to let you know that we appreciate you. We appreciate all that you do for this community. Thank you. Council members, thank you guys. I wish I could be there in person, but as you guys know, I'm in the hospital. Hopefully, I'll get out soon. But thank you all for everything you've done. Thanks for everybody, all the um, city employees, the citizens of Chattanooga for all they do. Um, thank you all for coming. I appreciate the exercise you put in. I love this city just like you love this city. And I want to grow, and I want to I want the houses are selling like crazy, so we got people coming. Um, I've had a couple of calls, Robert. One's about the hurricane season. How's it going, and how much longer is it going to be? They keep asking. Will y'all be doing that when you start your workshops in May, based on whatever direction you want to give me? But you know, it, it's coming in November of this year was the original note, so we'll be accepting that coming up in May. Now, the fire truck, did it go through the sale? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And so that money's going into the fire truck fund? Is that how it works? Well, we've set this aside now. Sammy worked up. We've applied for a forestry grant. The fire department got together. Any of you, you won't find it. Um, uh, it's a 50 50 grant, so we're going to try to turn that 10 into $20,000 worth of stuff. Quickly. But it's all going towards the fire department, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Um, Chief, thank you for all you do. Volunteer firefighters, thank you for what you do. I mean, I think they're always on call. Good Lord. Well, we've had a rash of breast fires on that. That's hard to interrupt, but I'm just tickled with the policy y'all did, you know, starting October 1. Yeah, we have about seven showing up for calls now. Really? The firemen just come from everywhere. Yeah. But, you know, you're kind of giving them a little stipend. So that's, we'll just know yeah. that, that is worth it. But bless the hearts, I've seen they just been one call after another. <laughs> I've never got to meet you, Reverend. Start. Yeah. It's very nice to meet you, and I appreciate you for coming to this town and bringing and providing some Jesus to the people of this town. It's important. And being out in the community, I see you do the farm share and all that, and that's important. Times are hard. The economy's rough, and it means a lot. And I hope to get to come visit you one day when Mr. Chief speaks. And that's all I have. Chief, you want to say anything? I just want to thank everybody for supporting me and, uh, and welcoming me. Uh, this is definitely a new environment. Uh, I'm a Tallahassee native, so you know I was a little intimidated when I came over here. But uh, everybody welcomed me with open arms. I appreciate everybody's support. Um, and I don't plan on going anywhere, so y'all kick me out. Amen. Um, Williams wants to say something. Um, yes, ma'am. Have you taken a look at that burn building there at yes, Lincoln Drive? And he has. Where are we with that? That is an active case. And he said to me, we had a meeting in here, I'm going to say a week before last, I attended, because there was a couple of cases I was very concerned about. And it came up. Uh, they had 60 more days. Oh, yeah. But it looks like um, that's possibly one we're going to wind up. Might be our first one that we wind up with. 
Uh, but no, he's fully aware of it, but he has not dropped the gavel and um, time they asked for time, and then they didn't show up at the hearing that I was in, they first said they didn't show up. So he's already set the date for the next hearing, and that'll be D-Day. So it's not going to happen in the next two months, but it is, it is moving along. And that, it is a case before the magistrate. Right, since you brought that up. Mm -hmm. I know Mr. Miller told us that he couldn't, as the city council, could not attend those magistrate meetings because of a conflict. Or, or yes, under our present structure, there will be subsequent actions that you will take based upon the record. And uh, and the record will be the report that's, that's presented to you, that will report to you each of the stages. Uh, there is the list that you're attending selected uh, matters would show a prejudice and perhaps compromise uh, you or, or give rise to a conflict of interest. So you've got, you, you've got functions at the back end of an uncollected item, and so I encourage you to, to not attend those. Would that prohibit us from having a, a listing of the houses that are on that agenda? No, you, you can see an agenda. I mean, if we were to have a, a listing of all the property on the you, you can see an agenda. Yes, we can see an agenda. There's an agenda for each hearing. Yeah. Would y'all like this for the TV? Mm -hmm. Just so we'll know which ones we've already been looked at and which ones have been in the process, I think there's like the 75 acres or something, but he only wants to hear about five, four or five each hearing. Well, people, have, people ask about the one that you're talking about. Yeah. And I say, I, that, was on the, that was on the list, I don't, but I don't know when it comes up. Well, what, what you need to do on those kind of referrals, and I know this is hard because you're elected officials, you need to just refer those kind of inquiries to management. Because you're going to have you're going to have a future function that must be an objective function and not subjective that you have some predisposition of the result that ought to happen. And your picture, you've been lucky so far, extremely lucky, but your picture would get so there's one that's uh, up about $50,000 a time now. Um, and I think that. I think we'll wind up cleaning up the one you just mentioned, and there's one over on Pearl that I think is fixed to be donated to the city. Um, yeah. All right, well, I, I, I probably could, but I don't want to at this point because it is a code case. Oh, it's code case. I have a. What about the new sign we're going to try to put out there coming in? And I, I it's ordered. It's ordered. It should be here any day. And we get our money. 